Hey everyone, welcome to Wikcode, where in this video, I'm going to show you how to store passwords securely. So, passwords need to be stored in a database such that even if the database was breached by a hacker, the hacker would have a hard time using the passwords. To do this, the actual password values should not be stored in the database, but rather a hash of the password. This not only protects passwords from hackers, but also from anyone who has access to the database, including developers. Before we go any deeper though, let's talk about the ways passwords should not be stored in a database. So I think we all know that we should never store plain text passwords. Storing passwords as plain text is never a good idea because if a hacker manages to access a database containing plain text passwords, then they have access to every user's password. Even if a user created a really strong password with varying characters, numbers, special characters, the hacker would be able to see the password in plain text. We should also never store encrypted passwords. Encrypted passwords are passwords that have been transformed from plain text into unreadable ciphertext. Encrypted passwords are better than plain text passwords because if a hacker gains access to the database containing encrypted passwords, they would have to decrypt the passwords to use them. However, as we'll see in a second, if they get hold of a key that was used to encrypt the plain text passwords, then the hacker would be able to decrypt every single password. Let me give you a quick demonstration. So here, say we're using, let's actually use more modern syntax. So here, what we're doing is encrypting the plain text encrypt me. Encrypting plain text requires a cryptographic algorithm and a key. In this instance, we're encrypting the text encrypt me into ciphertext using the AES 256 CBC algorithm and a randomly generated security key. So if we run this program, we can see the encrypted text. This is what encrypt me gets encrypted to with this algorithm, vector, and security key, which is done right here. However, storing encrypted passwords is not the best idea either, as they can be decrypted if the key is discovered. So now let's bring in a decrypt function. So we have our encrypt function here, and now we have one that decrypts the text. And so first, let's actually move this above the decrypt. So first we have, we will encrypt encrypt me, but then we will decrypt it. So if we run this, here's the encrypted text, and then here is the decrypted text. And so this is happening because we are using the same key listed here for create decipher, and then here for create cipher. So if a hacker got hold of the key, they could decrypt all the encrypted passwords in the database, so they would learn every user's password. The best way to store passwords is to store their hash, and a hash is the result of input being passed through a hash function. Hashes are the best way to store passwords, as unlike encrypted passwords, hashes cannot be reverted back to their original values. Therefore, if a hacker accessed a database of hashed passwords, they wouldn't be able to decrypt them. Rather, they would have to pass random passwords through a hash function to try and match one of the hashes stored in the database. Let's demonstrate hashing now. So I'm going to get rid of this, and now I'm going to import a function called hash password. So let's run this and see what the output is. So we can see what's outputted is a hash right here. We are hashing the word cheese. So specifically, we're creating a hashing function with the SHA-256 algorithm. We then pass the password here to it, or just any kind of text, and then calculate the hash, which we log out here. However, storing a hash alone is not enough, and this is because the same input provided to a hashing function, if it's using the same algorithm, will always give the same output. So say here, we hash cheese again. Let's change this to cheese to two. If we run this, notice how we get the same output each time. No matter how many times we run this, we get the same output. And because of this, giant lists of common passwords and their corresponding hashes can be used by hackers to identify hashed passwords in a database. A better idea is to store a unique hash for each password. And this can be done using a something called a salt. And so a salt is a unique randomly generated string that is added to each password. And the salt and password are then hashed together. To demonstrate, we can change this function here to accept a salt. So let me just paste this in. So now we've changed this password, this hash password function to accept a salt, which we can append here and here. So now if we run this, notice how the output is different because we use salt one here and salt two here. So in other words, even though the password is the same, so it's both our cheese, the salt makes the hash different. However, before we go any further, the way the password was hashed and salted here is merely a demonstration of hashing and salting. In production, this is not a secure way to hash passwords as the algorithm isn't strong enough. Instead, 
you should use third-party libraries such as bcrypt for Node.js, which is what we're going to do right now. So the way to use bcrypt is we first install it, and it's spelled bcrypt. After it's been installed, we just need to import it. So I'm going to paste in some more code here. So now we have, we've imported bcrypt up here. We have a function called hash password, which hashes a password. And then we have a function main, which runs our hash password function. So specifically, we import the bcrypt library. Next, we generate a salt using the bcrypt gen salt method, and we provide 12 salt rounds. And so a salt round, essentially, the more, the higher the number provided here, or the more salt rounds, the more secure the hash will be, but the more CPU and GPU performance will be required. Specifically, the higher the salt rounds, the higher the rounds of hashing. As a rule of thumb, the number of rounds to use should be based on the specs of the system performing the hashing. You want your password to be as secure as possible, but you don't want to use a number of rounds that hinders the application performance. Next, we hash the password, so this supplied here, using the password as the first argument and the salt as the second. This returns a password hash, which we return for this function, and then its function is called here, and we simply log it out. So let's run this, and we can see our output here. And this output here actually follows a specific pattern, and let me get that pattern and paste it here. So what it is, is first we have a dollar sign, which we can see right here, followed by the algorithm, which here is 2B, which essentially means bcrypt. Next we have the cost, or the amount of salt rounds, which is 12, which is equal to the number we provided here. Then there's another dollar sign, which we can see here. And then we have the salt and hash together. So actually if we log out our salt here, and we run this program again, we can see our salt right here, which matches up through here. Of course, it also includes the algorithm and the number of salt rounds as well. And we can also use bcrypt to verify passwords. So let me paste in another function. This one is called compare password. And what this simply does is it uses the bcrypt compare function, which takes a string and compares it to a provided hash. And then this function returns true if the password matches the hash and false if it does not. So now let's just change our main function to use this here. So I'm going to just going to paste in some more code. We're going to provide we're going to hash the string password and then we're going to compare it to the password and see what we get back. So if we run this, of course we get true. And the reason it's saying undefined here is because we need to return the result and now we get the password verification is true. And let me just show more of this in action. Let's get our password hash. Let's log that out too. So log out our password hash and here it is. And now notice how this hash is different each time because we're using a salt, a random salt generated. So it's different here, here, and here. Um, even although it will still equate to true for the string password because it is just the salt that is different. So if say to our compare password here function for the password hash, you provide this. Now if we run this, we'll get true. And if we keep running it, it's always going to be true. However, if we change say some of the characters in here, and run this again. Now we get that the verification has failed. And now I just want to end this video with talking about how this works with a database. So when it comes to storing hash passwords in a database, we need to store both the salt and the hash. And this is of course so the hash can be recalculated. Specifically, when a user logs in, the salt for that user is fetched from the database, most likely using their username, and then appended to the provided password. The salt combined with the password are then hashed and compared to the hash stored in the database. If they are the same, then the password is valid. However, because bcrypt includes the salt in the hash string here, we would only need to store the hash. So it's nice that bcrypt does that part essentially for us. But so this was my video on how to store passwords securely. If you want to support me, please consider downloading, downloading my Chrome extension called Whip Scepter. Link in the description. But besides that, thanks for liking and subscribing, and have a good one.